So Representative Jim Jordan has announced that he will not testify before the House Select Committee about Donald Trump's conduct surrounding the insurrection. Let's talk about the three main reasons witnesses often try to weasel out of having to testify. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. Well, we now know that Ohio Representative Jim Jordan says he won't testify. So Jordan is now on record, courtesy of this four-page letter he authored, and boy is it a beauty. He's on record saying that he will not provide information to the bipartisan House Select Committee investigating the insurrection. He will not provide information about Donald Trump's conduct. He will not provide information relevant to any crime Donald Trump may have committed. Well, let's take a look at this letter. And first, I have to comment on some of the nonsense that Jordan put in the letter. But then I want to talk about the implications of Jordan refusing to testify about Donald Trump's conduct surrounding the insurrection. Now, mind you, this letter is designed to simply say, um, I, I politely decline your invitation to testify before the House Select Committee, but that's not exactly the tone of this letter. He opens with partisan witch hunts. Then he goes on to talk about calls from Democrats in 2020 to defund the police. He talks about rampant inflation, the crisis at the southern border. And Jordan finishes the letter with President Biden's week. Yeah, that's the Jim Jordan we've come to expect. But I want to talk about just two sentences in this Jordan letter. The first reads as follows. As you well know, I have no relevant information that would assist the select committee in advancing any legitimate legislative purpose. Now, I want to take the second part of that sentence first, because it seems like Jordan acknowledges that the House Select Committee has a legitimate legislative purpose. He simply says, I have no information that would assist you regarding that legitimate legislative purpose. We'll get to the first part of the sentence in a minute, but I'm glad that Jordan at least tacitly admits that, yeah, the House Select Committee has a legitimate legislative purpose. In fact, all courts that have taken up the issue have ruled that the House Select Committee has a legitimate legislative purpose. The trial court and the appellate court in D.C., all judges unanimously have so ruled. Of course, we're waiting for the Supreme Court to hopefully deny review of that appellate ruling. Let's turn to the first part of that sentence, where Jordan asserts, quote, I have no relevant information that would assist the committee. So can you imagine, friends, if investigative bodies, whether Congress, the grand jury, the FBI, if investigative bodies had to accept a witness's declaration, I have no information or evidence that would assist your investigation. If we had to accept that and abide by that and therefore decline to pursue the witness's testimony. I was a prosecutor for three decades, folks. I issued more grand jury subpoenas than I can remember. And if I had to accept the witness's statement that, well, Prosecutor Kirshner, I have no relevant information, so I'm not going to appear. Can you imagine how much crime would be solved? Yet none. And in my experience, there are typically three reasons 
witnesses try to weasel out of testimony because in this, th this is four pages of weaseling. That's all this is from Jordan. He's not asserting a legitimate privilege against testifying, like a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, which he may very well have. We don't know what he said in those many phone calls with Donald Trump on the day of the insurrection or what he talked to Trump with in the run-up to the insurrection or what he might have done to give aid and comfort to various people after the insurrection. So we don't know at this moment if Jim Jordan has a legitimate Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, which I would never call weaseling out of testimony because the Constitution guarantees everyone a right against self-incrimination. But that's not what Jordan is trying to do. Jordan is doing some first-class weaseling in this letter. Three main reasons, in my experience, that witnesses tried to weasel out of testifying. And I had witnesses try to do it all the time. And typically, it was either because they were complicit in the crime I was investigating, or they had legitimate witness security concerns. They were fearful of having to testify against the target of the investigation. And believe me, I understood that. And that is why we had all kinds of witness security programs and safeguards available to witnesses who had a genuine fear of presenting truthful testimony against others. Or three, the witnesses were, were loyal to the target of the investigation. They were supporters of the target of the investigation. They were enablers of the target of the investigation. And that is why they tried to weasel out of testifying. So we'll know soon enough whether Jim Jordan is one, complicit, two, fearful, by extension, maybe fearful of losing the support of Donald Trump's base and losing his reelection, or three, simply a Donald Trump loyalist slash sycophant who is desperately trying to bury incriminating information about Donald Trump's conduct. We'll know soon enough because Jim Jordan will end up testifying one way or another. Push comes to shove. He'll testify. And when he does, I will very much look forward to seeing if he makes himself out to be a liar when he said in this letter, I have no relevant information that would assist the committee regarding Donald Trump's conduct. And here's the second sentence of the Jim Jordan four-page letter I want to focus on. He talks about being aware of a report where the FBI has determined the violence was not coordinated or part of any organized plot to overturn the presidential election result. Well, Friends, that is untrue. How can I say it's untrue? Well, members of some right-wing radical groups, some white supremacist groups, have been indicted for a conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, namely the certification of Joe Biden's election win. So that assertion by Jim Jordan really accomplishes only one thing. It gives aid and comfort to the insurrectionists, some of whom have already been indicted for a conspiracy to obstruct the electoral college vote count. And it also gives aid and comfort to the insider in chief of the insurrection, Donald Trump himself. And you know, we have a law for that. Whoever incites, sets on foot, assists, or engages in any rebellion or insurrection against the authority of the United States or the laws thereof, or gives aid or comfort thereto, shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. Anyone who gives aid 
or comfort to the insurrectionists. So friends, I urge you, read this four pages of nonsense by Jordan for yourself and, and ask yourself the question, do these assertions in his letter give aid and comfort to the insurrectionists, some of whom are already indicted? And if it does, what is the Department of Justice going to do about it? Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.